All right, so I um, just right clicked on the letter and that allows me to grab this whole column. And then here's the insert and delete. So that's the way that I use insert and delete um, because it allows me to select what I want to either add or delete and add it quickly. But you can absolutely go up here and use these as well. And it works the same with rows. So you can right click on the number and grab the whole row and add or delete clear contents, <clears throat> anything related to the row. Okay, AutoSum is here and we will use this later on. Fill, I don't use this from this button. I use the fill handle, which I'll teach you in a little bit. And then clear is nice because it allows you to clear the format, which would be your color, um, a font, or the background, or the style of the letters. It will take it back to just this um, base font. Clear contents will leave all the formatting, but clear the contents or the numbers you've entered. Um, and you can do something called comments, which is yeah, awesome, but not something we really cover in the class. Certainly, this would be something I would Google and check it out because I use it when I'm like reviewing other people's work. But anyway, you can clear everything, just the format or just the contents. And then, so this is handy. Okay, sort and filter which allows you to sort um, all the data. Very cool. I use that all the time in real life. And um, let's take a look at some of the other tabs. So insert is here. Here's the insert tab. This is um, a great tab. You can put your pictures in here. We don't do that a whole lot in this course, but it, you can. We work primarily in these charts here, and you can see there's just a ton of other stuff you can do. We also have your header and footer in this um, tab, which is handy. Page layout is much like Microsoft Word, so you can do your margins, um, flip the pap paper standing up or laying down, portrait or landscape, and then you can also um, set your print area here which is pretty cool. I'll explain that later and the importance of that. Here are your grid lines so you can see those are there. Formulas tab. This one's like a giant hole. I mean there's so much you could do on this tab. AutoSum is here but we use it back on the home tab. We use AutoSum here but it does live on the formulas tab too. I don't go into these and teach you them they're great and powerful, um, but I, for the basics, um, I don't work in them personally. I don't work in them. Show formulas is key because it allows you to see the entire worksheet, but the formulas instead of the actual computations. So if I have um, asked you to add up some things, I can flip to this button, click it, and I'll, it'll show me all your formulas so I can check your work. So even if you have the right numbers on the worksheet, I'm still always going to check the formulas. Okay, data. So here's your sort, but we use this on the home tab. Um, nope, we don't really go into anything on here. Here is your comment key that you may want to, you might want to check that out. It's it's handy and helpful and you have your spelling here. The view tab is probably one that would be as important as your home um, home tab. So you have your grid lines again uh, so two different places you can fix your grid lines. You also have all the different ways you can look at a page. Um, normal is what I work in most of the time anyway. Um, I like it because this dotted line right here will show you um, the page break. And a lot of times I'll have students building something and it goes over the page break and they start to worry. Don't worry. You can make anything um, fit to a page because there's a feature called fit to page. And I'll teach you that in a little bit. So I work in this view because I don't really care where the page break is because I'm going to set it to fit to a page. 
or I'm going to select only so much data to be actually be printed. Um, and honestly, we're really getting to the point now with these spreadsheets and, and anything that we don't print, we just review it and make comments or whatever, you know, do whatever we're going to do with the data. And oftentimes, I don't print. Like, I never print my budget every month. I just work on it. My husband and I review it, and then it's saved. Um, so printing is becoming less and less, which is, I think, a good thing. Lots of things don't need to be printed. But anyway, um, one thing to remember about Excel, if you're new to it, is that you can go infinitely to the right and infinitely down. So um, you just can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and it's crazy like that. I'm going to grab the scroll bar here and go back all the way up. And then you can do the same thing here going to the right. You can see it just kind of goes forever to the right. I'm sure at some point it stops and if you want to know that number you can Google it and someone will have gone all the way to the end and will tell you what that is. Um, so that's why when you work in normal you, you have just a page that never ends going to the right and a page that never ends going down. Which is kind of a crazy concept but it's really awesome when you're working with huge amounts of data. All right, moving on. You have your zoom options here. You can um, freeze panes, which is handy if you want to like keep the top row showing, because maybe you have headings that tell you what's in that column. So that's a handy feature. I use that a lot. Split is really neat. When you do this, you can see you've got this line. And let's say you're working, you want to see something up here in your the top part of your data sheet but you can scroll down here on the bottom one. So now you're comparing line 60 to line 10 or something like that. So the split feature in Excel is pretty a great way to look at different data that's on a big spreadsheet. Switch windows would allow you to move between two different books. If I had two books open, I could also look at them side by side. So book one might be here, and then book two might be here, two different things. And then macros we don't get into in this course, but I've used them in past jobs and they are very handy. It's just, um, it's like an automation of common tasks. You can make a sequence. It's kind of like programming a little bit, but it's it's cool. Don't, don't be dogging it just because it's a little bit of programming there. Okay, so that's a quick walk through your tabs. Over here, standard stuff, help. And this one allows you to change the way the ribbon looks. Then you have your minimize, your restore, and your close the entire program buttons. Down here is your zoom, and this is a handy way to zoom in and out. I use the control, I hold the control button down and roll my track bar. That's how I, I typically zoom, because it works on all the Microsoft programs. Then you have your different views that you can look at here. And I generally stay in normal almost all the time. Okay, I think that is enough just to make you dangerous. In the next video, we'll go a little bit further and we'll start building some worksheets. So, I hope this makes you excited and you can't wait to start Excel. I just love Excel. I love Excel because it's like math. It's just very simple. It's either black or white. It either works or doesn't. And I'll show you some tricks and it's awesome.